I channeled Chan 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 Chin Chin. I channeled my energy forward through the hall, wanting so much to go back to the room, flop onto the bed and sleep. However, something in my gut stopped me from moving as I approached my bedroom door. Uh oh. Huh? Something felt wrong. Whether it was something in the air or my natural instinct screaming at me, something was throwing me off and I couldn't pin down why. As a pained groan escaped the room, my suspicions were confirmed. Oh no. This music has been strong. This isn't good. I peeked into the bedroom to see Damien curled up in bed, gripping his head and pressing his knees into his chest. <sighs> Damien! I rushed over and knelt by the bed, now insanely worried. What was happening with him? As I got close, however, Damien jutted his hand out, facing his palm to me in a tense position. Stop! Don't! I froze in place. His face was contorted to one of extreme pain, gritting his teeth and crushing his eyebrows together in a tight expression of agony. I couldn't tell what was going on, but whatever it was, it was torturing him. Damien violently shook his head, digging his fingers further into his head. Please, just stop! Thoughts! No! All the thoughts are- all the thoughts are- No! Pressing in on him! No! 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 No, that's not allowed! Stop doing anything. Stop doing anything? Yes? Yeah. Okay. I let every part of my body become still. My thoughts, my limbs, everything apart from breathing and blinking. If Damien was hearing thoughts again, then he was probably getting bombarded with castles worth of them. I needed to make sure I wasn't adding to the pressure. Damien opened an eye to me, glazed over in tears, and smiled ever so slightly, knowing exactly what I was doing. Thank you. Fuck this game! <laughs> I let my emotions rumble in my chest as I nodded with a smile. I understood him perfectly. After all, I was going to be his wife. However, a minute passed and nothing had changed. I began to instinctively worry, but I forced the feeling into my chest and continued to let my head remain empty of thought. Damien attempted take deep breaths, trying to calm down further, but to no avail. <clears throat> I became even more worried than before. What was I supposed to do? Libera mente tua. Okay. The sound of Diana's voice echoed through the room, forcing me to turn and look at her as she stood in the doorway. She stared hard at Damien, holding a hand out to him. Her fingers and palm began to glow a dark purple color, like flame dancing over her skin. Oh. Damien slowly rolled onto his knees on the bed, still gripping his head and growling to himself as Diana slowly approached him, holding her hand close to his forward tilting head. Libera mente tua! The flames around Diana's hand sparked, intensifying its glow, as Damien winced and hissed out the sting of pain. I continued to remain still, not wanting to add pressure on Damien's head, but confused as to what Diana was doing. Very slowly, Damien's head began to glow with the same purple color before a stream of purple energy began to trickle from him towards Diana's hand. As it connected, the energy around Damien's head began to fade at last, and Damien's tense form began to relax. Diana tensed her hands and caused the flame around her skin to warp around itself, forming an orb above her palm as she turned it towards her. As it settled into a physical purple ball, she grasped it and let it shatter in her hands. Glass and blood began to trickle from her closed grip as Damien finally released a breath of air, slamming his hands down on the mattress beneath him and curling himself further over his knees. Damien? I instinctively reached over and placed my hands on his arm feeling the cold sweat run down them from the struggle he was facing from Rance earlier. He was paler than ever before, 
but his face slowly melted to an expression of calm relief. I looked back to Diana, seeing her lift her hand to her mouth and lick over her new wounds. Blood trickled down her arm, but she managed to catch most of it with her tongue, unfazed by Damien's sudden relaxation or my stare. What did you do? Diana kept her focus on her arm and hand as she replied. I did something that his brothers should have done a long time ago. Placed a barrier on his mind. Uh, what does that mean? What? I threw. I threw. Shielding him from thoughts. Okay, so why did nobody do that? My question, too. I have a lot of questions about Damien's upbringing and, like, why no one put a shield on him, why no one taught him to read. I mean, I, I just want him to be happy. I'm... <laughs> what? I furrowed my eyebrows in confusion, not understanding what she meant. As Diana finally looked back at me, she allowed a sigh at my expression. He can read minds, but he can't control it. However, imagine putting a bubble around his thoughts. He wouldn't be able to hear anything but his own. This is precisely what I have done. Why hasn't anyone else done that? Why is this coming up now in the second game and no one's done it before? Give me a reason. Just give me a reason. Just a little peace of mind. Then what was that energy you pulled from him? That was something that shouldn't have been there. It's nothing to be concerned about. Right, Damien? Again, I became more confused. However, I looked up to Damien to see him looking up at Diana with a forced, thankful look. I could tell he was grateful for the assistance but I could also tell that he was still angry with her. However, that spell won't last forever. He'll need to maintain it using energy. But I'm sure you can provide that, correct? I was lost, but I understood what she was saying, nodding in acknowledgement. Um. That's right, kid. Always question the man. What did you take from Damien? I wanted to know exactly what was going on. The confusion that was going on throughout the day of Damien's well-being was too much to ignore. And I needed to sort it out, if not for him, then for my own sanity. Diana gave me a firm look, crossing her arms. A little piece of the demon lord that has been haunting him. Happy? Yes, thank you. Okay. What? Diana shook her head and allowed a sigh. I don't want him to have to. He can explain if you're that curious. Diana then turned on her heel and walked towards the door. Before she left, however, she turned back and looked to Damien. Be careful how much you feed. You've been without energy for too long. You'll be craving soon. With those haunting words, Diana finally left the room as Damien laid his, laid his hand on mine. His head on mine. He let out a tired sigh as I looked up at him, lost as ever. Just from his expression, I could tell that he was just beyond relieved to be out of whatever torture the mind reading had forced upon him. It was something he never wanted. And yet he had to endure it for the day until Diana blocked his mind. Why she didn't do it before was beyond me, or anybody else for that matter. But yeah, at least he was okay for now. The more I thought about it, the more part of me began to question this situation. If Damien could block out his mind reading, then would it be possible for him to want to be a demon again? As a demon, he had many interesting abilities. Then again, it was his decision... And from what he had told me about his past, he didn't wish to relive any of it with the skin he was born in. I let the inner conflict wane as I cupped Damien's cheek, feeling him nuzzle into it. Right now, Damien needed some tender, loving care. I want to love you! He wanted the young thing! You need some loving! To your seat to the love and care! And I'll take you there! Anyway... I needed to provide it. Are you okay? I am now. I could hear the ease drip from his voice, making me smile. He was okay now. I slowly climbed into bed with him and wrapped my arms around his body, feeling him cuddle into my embrace and loud a hum of joy at the feeling. It was cute to see him like this. Then again, he was cute to begin with. Another reason why I loved him. I ran my hand slowly through his hair as I let him settle down from the ordeal he went through. 
I could tell he was exhausted, just like I was. However, he began to speak, making me awaken enough to pay attention to him. I've been having nightmares, too. No. Oh, you have? I looked down at Damien as he nodded and looked up at me. The dark circles under his eyes were much more prominent the closer I was to him, making me frown a bit at the sight. Still, he continued. Some sort of shadow kept visiting me and taunting me for my choices. It would change shape every time, and just now, it only helped in making my mind-reading abilities worse. Damien. I gave Damien a small squeeze, making him lean up and kiss my cheek before nuzzling his head into my shoulder, continuing. I didn't want to worry you with it because I thought it was a side effect to becoming human. But I guess it was right. I was always a demon. No! I frowned even further and nuzzled his head gently. It's gone now, right? There's nothing you need to worry about anymore. I know. Damien and I held on to each other, both settled into the situation we were under. This was a large step for us. We had to somehow deal with this most likely after we returned to the demon world. Would Damien get used to being a demon once again? Or will he demand to try and become a human once more? I couldn't say for sure. The exhaustion that plagued us took over at last, driving us to sleep within each other's arms. I half expected the night to be uneventful, but my thoughts began to plague me, trying to dissemble all of my discoveries and everything that had happened to us in my subconscious. We were in the demon world, and Damien was back to being a demon. Despite that fact that he never actually became human in the first place, even though Diana said she had done it. The dizzying cycle of confusion waved around each thought, making them spin as I tried to organize and dissect them. There's no use in trying, dear. You'll only become more confused uh, in the end. Diana's voice rang out in the air, causing me to look around in surprise at the dark. Diana? <laughs> Keep telling yourself that, dear. Whatever helps you sleep. Uh huh. I spun around the space, trying to pin down where her voice was coming from. Still saw nothing but the black color of my imageless dreams greet me as I did. Still, Diana's voice rang out to me loud and clear, as if she were there watching and speaking to me somewhere nearby. Was this only meant to confuse me more? What do you want? What do you think, dear? I'm here to haunt you and tell you how your life is a complete mess now that Damien is back to being a demon. Oh, wait. He was never human in the first place. This is like middle school shit. Oh my god. This, this, whoever this, I don't know who this fucking shadow is or whatever, but this is so petty. Petty and not, frankly, not interesting. <laughs> I sneered at the dark, unbelieving what I was hearing. He may as well have been. He didn't have magic or mind reading or anything. He was close enough. Hmm, something tells me that you're actually happy about the turn of events, no? What? Think about it. Damien with his powers. He's not a boring human. He can enthrall you, and use magic, and protect you forever and ever, without worrying about human trivialities. This voice actually, like, literally sounds like a high school bully, like... Please stop. I know. I'm like, this is just... It's not... I know it's meant to be, like, taunting, and... But it's, like, in a, like, in a scary good way, or, like, it... And, you, you know, like, look. I'd have rather they'd gone straight to put it short, with it. To, be, to put it short, they meant they tried to make it good, yeah. and it's not. <laughs> it's just not. Just go just go full scary, and if you can't pull off the taunting thing, don't yeah. do it. I took a moment to myself, taking in what was the voice proclaimed in Diana's voice. While it was true that Damien and I accepted his humanity, a part of me was rather... Excited to see him as a demon again. 
Maybe it was the nostalgia of meeting him as a demon. Or maybe it was because it was a part of him I loved that made me happy. I couldn't tell. At my silence, the voice in the air chuckled deeply. Maybe it's because I love him, and I love him no matter what he is. See? There's nothing wrong with a little demon power. What was Damien thinking? Uh At that moment, my mind began to cloud with agreement. What was Damien thinking? Why desire to be a human? Humans were weaker. I'm sorry, are we being hypnotized or something? So... I'm clearly, obviously. My mind began to cloud with agreement. She's uh. being like, this is like, this is some fucking get out shit. Not really. The only thing that's similar about this. If this is supposed to be like a part of the demon lord haunting you, then why isn't it like scarier and more intense? Um, because the demon lord's voice has never been scary. No, I meant like. <laughs> Like, the, the kinds of things he says, wouldn't he, like, as an evil character, go farther than petty shit? He's always just sounded like a petty motherfucker, though. I've never found him scary. I haven't. I'm like, you know, he, like, he's done awful shit yeah, but that that's, I've been, like... that's the product you know, of I've... inexperienced writing. Yeah... I feel like if they wanted uh, this to be some sort of demon lordness haunting them, then they should have gone farther with it, is what I'm saying. I mean, no, I know. It's like, it's very petty and boring. Ugh. Humans were weaker than demons, and he could do so many things now that he had a barrier around his mind reading. He didn't have to give up his powers now, and everything would be completely okay. The voice disappeared, leaving the thought of Damien engraved in my dreams. He ran through my mind as the night passed to morning the next day. I woke up to Damien still in my arms, while the grogginess of the morning overtook my body and made me feel like going back to sleep. Something about Damien in my arms made me keep my eyes open. He seemed at peace, finally having some shut-eye and getting proper rest. I felt a wave of happiness run through me. At the same time, I couldn't help but remember the voice in my dreams. Damien was a demon. I ran my fingers through Damien's hair, becoming lost in thought once again. Was I being selfish or was I just being positive? Damien seemed to only hate his mind reading and that was taken care I of. I feel like he hates his entire history. Yeah, you would think so same time, a wave of reality washed over my moral compass. Damien had to be the one to decide. Yeah! It was his body, and he was the one ultimately living in it. Yeah! But was it even possible to become human? The question crossed my mind and settled in as I stared at the far wall. Would Damien even have a choice? Well, if there was no choice in the matter, then Damien was set to live a happier life with his mind-reading ability under a barrier. I just have to keep giving him energy, which didn't seem to be a big deal. As Damien nuzzled my shoulder in his sleep, I looked down at him and smiled. Yeah, he was okay. I rubbed my eyes as I stopped, but I stopped as I managed to spot Diana at the doorway, holding two plates of food and leaning against the door frame. The food looked delicious. The intrusion was out of place. Diana? Diana placed a finger to her lips, shh, don't speak, before walking over and gently placing the food she brought onto the table near the bed, being careful not to make noise. Damien seemed to cuddle closer, despite obviously smelling the food by the wiggle of his nose. Oh, he's a little bunny rabbit! I couldn't help but smile and nod to Diana, combing my fingers through Damien's hair as Diana crossed her arms and watched, lowering her voice to barely above a whisper to speak to me. You seem to be in a good mood. Heh. <laughs> Not really. I nodded, looking up at the succubus as I gently gave Damien a squeeze. Yeah, Damien got some sleep, which is what he needed. It was- I took the moment to look down at Damien's sleeping face, seeing how innocent and peaceful it was. The dark circles under his eyes seemed to have vanished, causing another relaxed wave to rush over me. 
Have you given him any energy? I shook my head, not remembering at all ever giving him energy. Whether he took energy in our sleep was something I would be unaware of, so I could only assume that he had not taken any from me at all. Diana pressed her lips together before looking to Damien. You'll need to feed him energy soon. I know. Diana nodded in reply before turning on her heel and walking to the door. Before she crossed the threshold, however, she looked back at me over her shoulder. I'm curious about something. Huh? What is it? For a moment, hesitation took over Diana's expression before she settled into her curiosity and asked, What? What are your thoughts about him being a demon once again? I stared at Diana, seeing the curiosity burn in her eyes. My grip slightly tightened around Damien as I let my thoughts try and construct an answer. At the same time, I wasn't entirely 100% sure myself! He wants to be human is my instinct. Yeah, he wants to be human. It doesn't matter what we think. I mean... He wants to I mean, it kind of matters, but, like, not really. <laughs> he wants to be human? He wants to be human. At the end of the day, Damien desired to be a human above anything else. He made that clear when we met, and I wanted to respect his decision. Hell, I fell in love with him even as he became human. He and I were closer that way. Diana stared at me for a moment before nodding in acknowledgement and leaving the room, closing the door behind me. That was an interesting interaction. Speak for yourself, Laundry. <laughs> Looking down at Damien's sleeping form, he had turned his head in his sleep so I could only see the top of his orange head. <laughs> I thought of Garfield for a second. <laughs> I smiled slightly and kissed the top of his head, causing him to stir a bit in my arms. At the end of it all, I wanted what was best for us. And that was something we had to deal with together. Whether or not this ended with him being human or not was up in the air. But for now, I had the responsibility of caring for him. Damien gently squeezed my form, allowing me to take in that he was awake now, and looked up at me with tired eyes. Mmm, good morning. Oh. I couldn't help but smile at his expression. He was an early bird. The rare occasion where I caught him more entranced in sleep than me were moments I found so adorable. Good morning, sleepyhead. Damien blushed a bit before crawling up and kissing me sweetly. Aww. I smiled wider against his lips and wrapped my arms around him, melting into the kiss lovingly. It had been years since I felt an incubus this energy drain, but to feel my energy snake over my nerves and into my lips felt odd. I had to get used to it again for now, and I tightened my arms around Damien to keep from pulling away from the slight surprise it brought me. As we slowly pulled away, I could see a tint of gold course through Damien's eyes as he looked down at me and licked his lips. A red tint flushed over my cheeks. It was my energy that delicious? <laughs> what did it taste like? What does it taste like? Uh, kind candy? <laughs> Before I could ask, however... Damien sat up and stretched his arms over his head, letting a small yawn trickle from his throat. But he relaxed. He made me yawn too! Fuck you! You made me yawn too! I can't help it! When he relaxed, he looked towards the table, seeing the food Diana brought us. Oh, wow. Did you make that? Yes. I looked over before shaking my head. Diana came and delivered it to us. Damien observed the plates for a bit as he listened to me before rolling out of bed and going over to the table and lifting the plates off of them. As he turned back to me, I took the time to sit up in bed, leaning back against the bedpost. Damien passed the plate to me and sat beside me, placing his own plate on his lap and eating what was prepared for us. I, however, watched for a moment, wondering what was going on in his head. What did he think about this whole thing? He seemed to be in better shape than he was before, which was good. Was he easily adjusting back to being a demon? A part of me felt a little happy at that idea, while the other part of me tried to be realistic. This was temporary. 
Maybe. As Damien caught me staring, he looked up at me and I stopped eating, causing me to flinch from being caught and start eating my own food. What is it? Hmm? You were staring at me. What's wrong? Uh, mm. What do you think? I want to I want to be truthful with him. I don't want to gloss over things or like, you know, yeah. try to like not deal with what is actually going on. Yeah. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Hmm? About what? Well, about you, you know, being a demon and stuff. Oh no, his eyes got small. Mm. I couldn't read his mind. I needed to figure it out somehow, and it was better to ask him personally than to make assumptions. Maybe he changed his mind about the whole thing, or maybe it became worse. Only he knew. Damien looked down at his plate for a moment before closing his eyes. I don't like it. I know you don't, baby. I know you don't. You don't. I don't. As good as it is to have my powers back, I still don't like using them. So you'd rather be a human without powers to fight? I didn't intend to be rude with the question. The idea of enjoying a powerless life seemed rather odd to me. Damien nodded, affirming my com comment. I would rather have no abilities at all than live with the responsibility of them. Having power has brought me too much pain for me to be happy with them. My baby. Damien looked up at me. A serious flame in his eyes. But, if having powers will get us home, then I will do everything I can to ensure that we return safely. <laughs> I stared wide-eyed at Demian, surprised at his words, but thankful for how much he was willing to work for us to get back home. He was right. What mattered at the moment was getting us home. We would figure the human part out after we returned.